What's up, everybody? This is Ron Sparkman from Stardom, and today we have an amazing guest. Juliana Bassani is going to join us today. She's an author, an aspiring astronaut, a social media influencer, and so much more. Uh, Julia, welcome to the show today. Hi, thank you. We're so glad to have you, and you've got a really amazing story. You've done so much so young. So uh, let's start off with something that we like to ask everybody. How did you first get inspired by space and science? Okay, so I have to say that when I was a child, I didn't really care about space. Like, I actually loved animals and nature. But actually, my mom tells me that when, whenever I saw the night skies and the stars, I always asked many questions. So I have to say that curiosity was already there. Then when I was like 12, 13 years old, I, I casually read a book by Stephen Hawking, one of the stories that he wrote uh, with his daughter, Lucy Hawking. <laughs> and that's when um, my love began, <laughs> my love for space began. Then at the high school, I began to study physics and astrophysics. And I found, I found out about all the science behind it all. And I really realized, realized how much I loved uh, all, the, all, all about space. Yeah. And uh, so when did you know that you wanted to be an astronaut? It happened in my third year of uh, high school. I was like 15 years old and the first uh, Italian woman astronaut went to the International Space Station, Samantha Cristoforetti. And from that moment, I began to, um, to study more, to get more into astronautics and aerospace engineering. I began to follow every expedition to the uh, International Space Station. I learned uh, what it really meant to be an astronaut, like uh, apart from being in space floating in wet weightlessness. <laughs> like, yep. And uh, so I realized that actually astronauts were um, super intelligent persons who uh, stay healthy and do science and I learned also about the very hard and tough uh, astronaut training that there is behind all the missions and um, it, it really amazed me. I realized that that, that was what I wanted to do. Uh, I, I knew that it was very difficult and hard but I've always had a thing for uh, difficult things and challenges. So here I am. I think, <laughs> I think you might have the, the right way to go. Then that's uh, it's certainly going to be a path. And uh, you you start you started really young in what you're doing, and you've already um, seen a lot of success. And because of that, you've become quite popular on social media, especially Instagram. You have a really big following. Um, so what is it about your journey that you think that is inspiring people to follow their dreams and uh, you know and to, to continue to follow you and what you're up to? Um, probably the fact that I'm aiming I'm aiming to such a high goal which is almost impossible but despite everything i'm following it um doing everything in my power mm -hmm. to reach uh to reach my goal and uh, and also probably the fact that um i'm very determined and whenever i put something on my mind mm -hmm. uh nothing can stop me and uh, probably that's what people admire because uh, very often people wrote me uh, saying that they also wanted to be astronauts, but then they said, oh, it's too difficult, so no. Why not? Give it a try. <laughs> Agreed. I agree 100%. So many people think that, uh, especially you hit a certain age, I'm 25, I'm 30, I shouldn't be able to do this anymore. I don't really care. I'm just, I'm going after it still anyway. You know, it's a lot, we see a lot of these astronauts that are well under their 40s and 50s even. I think yeah. Scott Kelly was 51 when he went up for um, his year in space. So yeah. a lot of people kind of get caught up in that, but I don't know. It's just, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that uh, people reaching out to you and hopefully, you know, realizing that they can do so much more than uh, than they think that they can. Yeah. Also, right now, I, I'm reading I'm reading the book by Scott Kelly, and it, it really is inspiring me a lot. I'm sharing my love for this book on Instagram, and everyone is now buying that book to read it as well. It <laughs> is so good, too. It's uh, I so a big shout-out to Scott Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you were saying? What were you saying? I, I'm doing a big shout out to Scott Kelly's book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he loves it and appreciates it. And that, that is, it really truly is an amazing book, especially when he shares the story that, you know, he struggled. You know, he wasn't a good student. Um, he yeah, had trouble yeah. when he first started it was in college. Really amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah. It really is just to see somebody that's accomplished that much from sort of humble beginnings, which is, uh, I mean, I think that's what connects us to so many astronauts that it sounds like this big impossible thing, but so many of them 
have, have gone other way to, to really do these amazing things. They were all ordinary people that did something extraordinary. So, you know, why can't somebody like yourself? And uh, I know that you're really big in doing outreach in your country and connecting with people. So can you tell us about some of the things that you, um, that you do there to, to reach out to the space lovers in your community and talk to school students, things like that? So, uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm studying engineering at the Polytechnic of Turin, which is one of the um, hardest university in Italy. So, I spend the majority of my time studying. Uh, but when I have free time, um, I try to organize conferences or public events about space exploration to, to speak, to, uh, to inspire people towards space. And, and also my favorite, my favorite thing is to go to elementary schools and speak to children because children are the explorers of tomorrow. And I love telling them about space because they are also uh, enthusiastic about it and they are my favorite public. Yeah, I would agree with that. Kids are always great. And they always have the best questions. You never know when you're going to get completely surprised by something random. Is there candy in space? Yes. <laughs> you know, so it's always... Okay. It's always yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> so um, you also work very closely uh, with World Space Week and you help organize it in Italy. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, World Space Week there, what it's like, uh, maybe, I'm sure it's a little different than what it is here in the, in the US. So, uh, so um, yes. for who doesn't know, World Space Week is a global event which takes place from the 4th to the 10th of October um, all around the world. And what uh, I do in the, in the team of World Space Week Italy is to um, organize uh, space events during this period of the year to celebrate space and science um, easily. <laughs> Simply, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, th that's, uh, that's just one of the, the, the many things that you do. You're, uh, you're spreading space in Italy, working with World Space Week. Um, you were also um, involved in a, a contest called the Odysseus Contest. And before we get oh, yes. to uh, your actual project, can you tell us what the contest was about, what it involved, and what you had to do to enter it and be involved in it? Yeah, um, I, took, I took part in the Odysseus Contest in 2016. And it was a contest where um, it was international, let's say European, um, where uh, every team of students had to project, uh, to uh, study a project uh, space related. And my teammates and I decided to make a project about an autonomous space base on Mars. Um, there were three phases of this contest. Uh, we won the national phase and the uh, international semi semifinals. Nice. And we went to represent Italy uh, to the European finals, which were held at the Eurospace Center in Transinne, where we had to present our projects in front of an international jury. And in that jury, there was also Matthias Maurer, who is now a uh, candidate astronaut for the uh, European Space Agency. So it was really a, a great experience meeting so many people from uh, all around Europe, everyone united there with the same passion for space, um, sharing their projects. And then we didn't, we didn't win the finals, uh, but still it was uh, a great experience and we were very happy with our results. And from then on, I continue to study um, Mars and human exploration of Mars. And a uh, big, big passion of mine as well. Uh, one of the, uh, um, the other uh, people that I work with, uh, Bill uh, Hargreiter and I both run I Love Mars. So it is something that I'm, I'm in on as well. You know, I'm hoping that, you know, fingers crossed, you know, Elon Musk gets to do what he wants to do. It takes a million of us to Mars. I don't know that I want to be in the first like 10 or 20, but the first 10 or 20. <laughs> I'm up for it. So um, the project that, that you have going on, uh, the, uh, the Pegaso uh, mission, hopefully I said that right, uh, it seeks to solve Pegasus. the big problems that we face in space exploration, yes. um, which is cosmic radiation. So can you tell us a little bit about how this project um, is wanting to find a solution to something that is a dire to our health and really surviving on, on the red planet or in space at all? <laughs> So um, this project is based on a research that we found on the internet, which, said, which was about an experiment that was conducted on Earth um, about this alga, which is spirulina, uh, which seems to be able to shield from the cosmic radiations. It was uh, an experiment, it is not confirmed yet. And we, with our Pegasus mission, my team and I will be the, um, the first to test the spirulina in the stratosphere, 30 kilometers from the surface, because in the stratosphere there are the same conditions regarding radiations as well as on Mars. 
And uh, so we are testing spirulina in the stratosphere with a space balloon using um, Geiger counters, I think it's in English, I'm not sure, <laughs> however. Yes. And um, we're going to see if it really shields from radiation, uh, from radiations or not. And if it does shield from radiations, then we would have found a very um, cheap solution to the space radiation and spirulina, which is uh, an algae really, uh, could be implied in, uh, let's say, EVA spacesuits for future Mars walkers. But that's yet to see. Now we're probably launching the mission in, uh, at the end of August, probably. Excellent, excellent. Congratulations on that. That will be amazing. And uh, we'll definitely have to do a future interview and catch up on all your research and what you guys are up to. And as you mentioned, you love Mars. And another thing you got um, that you just released your first book, which is very impressive for pretty much anybody, let alone somebody that is in school full time and as, as young as you are. So at Mars 12, this came out. I know you got to be excited about it. So can you tell us a little bit about the premise of the book and um, basically what inspired it? So um, this comes from the Odysseo Space Contest because during that contest, uh, at a certain moment, one of the judges asked me a question and he asked me if it was possible for children to be born and grown up in that base. And of course, at the time, the answer was no, because I had projected that base only for a, a mission of limited time. Mm -hmm. But then when uh, the contest finished and I continued to study Mars, that question remained remain in my mind. And let's say that that was the spark that then inspired uh, me to write that book. So um, this novel uh, tells about the story of the first human beings ever born on planet Mar Mars, and it is set in, this, in that same base that I had projected for the, for the Odysseus contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the protagonists are three guys. Um, they are an American boy, a Russian girl, and a Chinese boy, mm -hmm. because of course I think about a collaboration to go to Mars. Sure. And uh, um, they grow on Mars, and at the beginning, they have no contact with planet Earth. Like, they know that there are other people on Earth, but they don't know anything else about it. Um, and so eventually, uh, they begin to wonder, to ask questions to themselves, like, who am I? What am I doing here? Why am I here? And everyone else is on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, uh, adolescence is a very rebellious people where you tend to break the rules. But of course, if you break the rules on Mars, it can be dangerous. So there are going to be these um, adventures where they will face uh, dangers. And uh, during this trip that they will, uh, they will take to find their answers to their questions. Fantastic. And to, you have, to have so much going on and to be able to write a book is kind of impressive. Can you tell us the process of how you, you wrote this book with, with so many other things happening in your life? That's an impressive, impressive thing to take on and then get done. How long did it take you? That kind of thing. So um, the first thing that I do, that I did was um, uh, working on the scientific basis. And once I had the scientific part, uh, partially done, let's say, I began to project every single chapter so that uh, I had a shape of the story that I wanted to write. And then I began to actually write uh, the story. And I remember that I wrote like uh, every, every evening because, before going to sleep. Um, you have to consider that I wrote this book during my fifth year of high school, um, the same year of graduation. So I had to prepare for the final like, exam as well. Uh, but still, every night I, I went on my computer and wrote. But I did it with passion. Everything, everything I, do, I did, I did it with passion. Also, I, I love writing. And I, I was excited. I myself was excited to see what was going to happen, what I was going to make happen. <laughs> and so that's how I did it. I like that. And that's, it's very similar to the process. Um, you know, Bill, who I mentioned earlier, who I work with, is on his, his fifth book is coming out in his Mars Journey series. And he says that the characters just take him on this, on this trip, like he doesn't know where he's going. It's a big surprise will yes. happen, and he's shocked when he writes it. Those kind of things. Yes, so, because even um, even yeah. if you you create a project of the chapter of what you want to happen, mm -hmm. when you write, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> that, that, and that's kind of a fascinating thing. And it's kind of, I think it, that, that makes wanting to write um, even more intriguing. It's something I've always enjoyed and something I definitely want to do in the future. But you put pen to paper and then starting and then seeing where it, it takes you, I'm sure it's an exciting process. So um, right now it's currently in Italian, but you do have um, plans. You do want to trans uh, uh, translate it to English eventually, right? Yes. Um, probably, I, I, hope, I hope I will translate it to English soon, but mm -hmm. for now I, I can tell. I don't know, I have to talk about this with my publisher, <laughs> but, but I, enough, do want, I do want to translate it. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, for in the future, for everybody, um, you know, if you speak Italian now, now you need to go and grab the book. If uh, if you don't, we'll we'll all be uh, patiently waiting. Um, I think that's something we do pretty well in the space community. For the English version of it, we can't say, wait to see what you come up with. And um, so, uh, kind of to finish up, uh, can you tell us? You know, you've got so much going on in this that you want to be an astronaut. And you're writing, and you're doing so many inspiring things. And there's a lot of people that follow you and are following your journey, and they're very excited about what you're doing. Can you kind of give some words of advice to people that want to follow in your footsteps, and your fans, and our viewers, and everybody else that's uh, that's checking this out and uh, loves what it is that you're doing? Yeah, I'd say um, don't let your fears stop you. And because fears is what um, is what prevents you from doing something that maybe uh, you don't know you're able of doing. So give it a try and just do something because doing something, even if little at the beginning, is always better than doing nothing. So even though you may fail, because you have to always be aware of, of this fact, you just try, <laughs> go ahead and, and see what happens because you never know um, what future has for you. That, great word <laughs> indeed. So uh, where can people find you on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Um, let us know what those are. And then also we're going to drop it in the, uh, in the comment, well, in the, uh, in the description below. But if you want to tell everybody where they can find you, uh, go ahead and share it with us. Okay. Um, I'm on Instagram and on Twitter uh, named Astro Giulia, <laughs> Astro Space Giulia, uh, Facebook as well, and YouTube also Astro Giulia, but I actually don't use it a lot. <laughs> I published some video. <laughs> Here, the new one was really good. The one you came out with you know, just a few days ago was really nice. I like that one with the <laughs> We Will Rock You. We got a big Queen movie coming out here in a few months, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time to have that music in there. Uh, so it was great talking to you, today, to you today, Julian. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing a bit of your journey with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, what you're, what you're up to next. And uh, so um, everybody follow her on Instagram and on Twitter and make sure to keep up with all the cool things she's doing. And everybody do make sure to like and subscribe and check us out all of our new YouTube videos every week, our new interview coming out. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Do I have to say bye? <laughs> <laughs>